better if you put God first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to do this year is we're going to put God first. Are y'all excited about putting God first? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, we have uh, several people that are not here today. So I figured we would do the tithes and offerings a little different today to kind of let everybody, because there's several people that are online today that weren't able to make it due to some symptoms. So uh, we're going to pray for them as well as pray over the offering. So if, if you are, uh, you know, uh, ready to give, uh, then we can go ahead and, and do that now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got several ways you can give. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We can go ahead and bring the lights up. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You got many ways to give. You can give through the uh, what I do, just through a check. Just make a check payable to uh, Revolution Church. Or you can do online. You can text uh, 84321, follow it, uh, the directions, and then the cash app, which is the most popular uh, or the easiest way you could actually give today. And again, we're not after your money. Amen. <laughs> we're not after your money. But we, we are after seeing you walk in the blessing of God. We want to see that, okay? And I know when we obey God, God blesses us. How many of y'all believe God blesses us? Okay. How many of y'all are excited to be in 2022? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Man, this is a good day. I know it's rainy outside. It's been raining for like, you know, two years, but it's going to get past us, okay? We're going to get past all the rain. It's going to be good. Amen. God's got great things in store for every single one of us, okay? 2022 is going to be your best year ever. You hear me? It will be your best year ever ever okay and i want you to hang that banner over your mirror in your bathroom in your car and say it all the time this is going to be my year this is my year amen and when things ain't going the way they, they, they need to be going what you going to say it's my year it's my year okay you got to push guys anything worth getting in life you got to push to get it don't just hand it to you okay so uh I don't know, just kind of excited about that. But we're going to pray over our offering together. And we do welcome everybody that's online. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here too. Uh, and we're going to pray for some people in just a minute. Uh, we have, uh, you know, of course, Brandon and Sherry are not here. Uh, they're dealing with some things. Uh, Belinda, obviously you can see, is not here. Okay. She was watching a really good movie this morning. And uh, it was a good one. So, uh, you know, good husband. That's what we do. Okay. We just let her finish the movie, and uh, no, she said, I love you, baby. I know she's probably listening to me, I'm going to get you. Uh, no, she had a few symptoms, so she's, she's hanging out at the house. Um, then there was, um, I know it was oh, Maggie and Victor, their family, they were exposed to some people that had COVID in New York. They're fine, but they're just, you know, again, and I appreciate all of you guys that are, are being smart about this and not being rebellious. Uh, because again, that's not the way we roll. I mean, if you if you're not really feeling good, there's nothing wrong with tuning in and you know watching online and taking a few days to get to feeling better. That's okay. That's not you're not a weak Christian if you do that. Uh, I would call you a smart Christian if you did that. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, we have Maggie and Victor that are hanging out in the house right now. They're going through through some things uh, or just you know being protective. So we're going to pray for all of these. And we've been praying. Valencia is another one. Uh, Naima is another one. She was, she tested positive, so they're kind of staying at the house and chilling out. Uh, how many of y'all be glad when all this goes by, by, by? You know, ain't y'all about tired of hearing it? I, I know I am, okay? Um, I, like I said, I've quit listening to it, so I, I just get reports. Um, I'm just My life's much better not listening to it. It really is. As, I listened to it for about a year and a half, and it didn't do me no good. I mean, it just made me, you know, more confused and more aggravated and mad, so... I just figure we're just going to roll with it. So we're going to pray for them as well as we do the offering and just believe that the healing power of God touches them and, and they recover and get strong and, and get back in the house and, and let's get to rolling. Uh, Christy Milliken too, we want to pray for her because she just uh, she had a, a, another little procedure done, which should be the last one, and she should be ready to roll, okay? Uh, so uh, they're doing good. Uh, so let's just pray for everybody. That way, next week, we can get back in here and get to rolling. What y'all say? We got work to do, man. This is going to be a great year. I'm excited, man. This, this is a year of the power of God on display like we've never seen. I'm telling you, you're about to see some crazy stuff up in church, okay? I believe that, okay? Because we serve a crazy, awesome God that likes to do good stuff. So let's stand one more time because y'all going to be sitting for a minute. And let's just bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord and letting the online people be a part of it today, too. So... Let's just lift it up to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you for this opportunity that we have to be able to bring our tithes and offerings to you, our gifts to you. Father, what an honor and privilege it is to be able to bring back some of what you've given to us. It's just an honor. And I ask you, Father God, to receive it and turn and bless each and every person that gives, Father God. 
And bless them above and beyond what they could ask or think. That the window of heaven is open over their life, their business, their family. Uh, that, Father God, you just, you know, the devourers rebuke for our sake. The devil ain't coming in and getting nothing, Father. <laughs> you, you protecting us from that. We just give you praise and glory and honor for what you're doing in our personal lives, in our businesses, in our churches. So we give you praise and glory and honor. And we also pray, Father God, for the families that, that are, are dealing with some symptoms in their body. We lift each one of them up and we just call their bodies healed in Jesus' name. That the healing power of God is springing forth quickly and mightily through them in Jesus' name. That, Father God, they are, they are getting better even as we speak right now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory and honor. And everybody agree with that? Said amen, amen, amen. So be it. It's done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're excited about that. Amen. Well, today we're going to actually um, spend a little time talking about what we got going on. Okay. Uh, today is our first day of our fast, 21 days of prayer and fasting. How many is excited about praying and fasting? Y'all excited about that? I mean, praying and fasting. Okay. Uh, I know that's not a popular thing, okay, and my head, just like your head, uh, has kind of been battling with that, because how many of y'all like to eat in here? Everybody likes to eat, okay? Everybody likes to eat, and uh, we live in a country that, would y'all all agree, we have a lot to eat in this country, okay, of all different flavors, all different kinds. Well, what we're doing these next 21 days, uh, we're going to ask everybody to pull away from some of that, Okay? Uh, that means you don't pull away from things that you don't have no problem with. You know what I'm saying? I ain't eating no broccoli this year. <laughs> or this 21 days. Or I ain't eating no, for me it's English peas. I hate English peas. I'm going to tell you, them peas, uh, that's a cuss word to me. I ain't eating no English peas, okay? So for me to fast something like that, what am I doing? I'm not really doing anything, okay? So, um, and I'm going to spend some time talking about it today a little bit too. But I, I want to encourage you guys that, that this is an opportunity for you to kind of set the reset button in your life and to kind of put your flesh, you know, under control. Because if you're like me, it's been out of control the last two or three weeks, last month and a half, man. Since, I mean, come on, man. Thanksgiving, Christmas, I mean, and then the last week, I mean, man, I watched the Georgia game. Uh, oh, yeah. Had to little Georgia love in there. You know, we won, you know. That's the way we roll. Um <laughs> I know that ain't helping nobody, but it does help me. But anyway, um, I had my, my son was going to come over and watch the game, and I went. I made a special trip all the way to Domino's, spent 50-something dollars on some pizza. Man, I'm ready to celebrate. He wasn't able to make it. Belinda was laying in bed, so I'm trying to eat pizza, chicken wings, dip, I mean, car um, chocolate-covered popcorn. I mean, I'm having the time of my life all by myself in the living room, okay? <clears throat> but then we had all those leftovers on Saturday. Well, the fast starts today. So I'm thinking, man, we got we to gotta eat a lot of food today. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we gave it our best shot, man. I mean, we, we did. We, we gave it our best shot. Uh, but thank God that uh, Maggie and Victor swung by last night because she texted and said, hey, would you like to try a piece of Sarah's cake? I'm sitting there going, man, I don't need no more food, but I know it's going to be good. So, yeah, I would love to try it. And I knew what she was going to say. We're going to come bring it to you. I said, okay, all right, so she brought it to us, we had that to eat too, and it was amazing, uh, so we, we did, we crammed a bunch of stuff in, man, and, and I'm just really looking forward to the day. Now, Tuesday may be a different story, okay, I may be going, <laughs> uh, but, but really, guys, as we, as we step into this year, uh, I want you guys to take this first 21 days and be serious with it. Don't play around with it, man. Watch what happens. Shut everything down in your life, man. Shut down social media. Shut down TV. Shut down a lot of stuff. Try not to go to meet too many places. Try to stay home a little bit more. Really take some time and really spend some time with God and being quiet. Now, I know if you got kids, we, we did the fast when we had kids too. So don't look at me and go, well, you ain't got kids. You don't know what it's like. No, we did do it with kids too. And, and there's an element of fasting kids can do. Now, they probably ain't going to get excited about that, but, you know, there is a little element they can do, too. Uh, but we didn't push them like we did us, but, it, but it, it's still good for everybody as a family to do it. So I want to encourage everybody to really dive into this. Now, we're going to do some different things the first 21 days of this month. We will be having Saturday morning prayer from 9 to 10 
throughout this 21 days. We will also be having Wednesday night prayer from 7 to 8, and whatever happens, happens, okay? Uh, that's just the time. But we're going to come in, and we're going to pray. I'm going to teach you a little bit about prayer, teach about how to, you know, pray and be effective in your prayer. How many of y'all, when you, you know the reason why a lot of people don't pray? They don't see no answers to them. They don't get no results. You know, it's just, to them, a waste of time. But how many of you know that you can actually pray and get results? You can. And I'm going to actually teach you guys, just in my own personal life, but also what the Bible says. To where you can actually talk to God and actually get a response. Wouldn't that be nice? You know? Instead of you just praying about something and it don't come to pass. What does that do? That don't encourage you. That discourages you. Okay? But we serve a God that wants to, He hears you, and He wants to get things to you, but we have a part to play too. Okay? It's not on all God. So, so for the next three Wednesdays, we're going to get together and we're going to pray. And then uh, on the 23rd of January, we're going to have another baptism uh, for those that didn't get baptized. Um, so that'll be a good time just coming straight out of the fast. You know, we may all want to be baptized. You know what I'm saying? I mean, man, but I don't know, man. It's just something about this time I'm excited about. Man, just getting in the presence of God. I'm not planning any messages for this month because we're just going to roll with it. I know how God does. The more I separate myself from food and things, it opens me up to some things. I don't want to be just kind of already set in something. I want to be able to come in here and let's just deliver what God's got for us. Now, when I say that we're going to be doing a 21-day fast, many of you guys uh, may not understand what that is, okay? There's many different ways you can do a fast, okay? Um, you can do a Daniel fast, which is basically um, just vegetables and fruits and stuff and nuts and stuff like that. But really, um, the Daniel fast has done really got out of control. I mean, there's people that will, you know, be going through a fast and shoot a picture of their, their plate of food and put it on Instagram. And, man, we're just spending time with Jesus. Yeah. And, man, that's a buffet-looking thing, okay? So, again, you can go overboard with the Daniel fast. Well, I got to go shopping today because I got to get everything for the Daniel fast. And you got three hundred dollars worth of groceries coming out. Going to go do a Daniel fast. What? What is that? I mean, you're going to be eating like crazy, okay? So it is about you being uncomfortable. That means it's going to hurt when you start. Even your head right now. When I'm saying this, some of y'all are going, "Man, it's I, no, okay? I'm not going to say no to food." All right? That's all the more reason why you should say no to food. But as you say no to food, your stomach's going to growl. It's going to make noise. But that don't mean you're going to die, okay? It just means that it's used to something, and it's not getting it. I've been kind of conditioned in my body for the last two or three days. Hey, we fasting. <laughs> hey, guys, we go fast. We ain't going to be eating like crazy no more. And, and so far, that's been pretty cooperative with me. You know, I don't know how, like I said, I don't know how it's going to be. So you have the Daniel fast you can do, or you can do uh, what me and my wife are going to do because I'm the leader of this church, and I believe I need to lead the way. We need to lead the way, okay? So as the leaders of this church, we're going to be primarily doing liquid only. <laughs> All right? Uh, that's just what we've elected to do. I mean, some chicken broth and, and stuff like that. And with me working, I may grab a banana every now and then, you know, because I will be strenuously working and doing some things. And I, I don't want to push my body off the cliff and be out there on the job and... <laughs> My friend go, what's up with you, bud? I'm going for it, man. I'm going for it. <laughs> Could you get this door off of me? <laughs> I can't move it, okay? You know, so I, I'm going to be wise there too, but we're really going to really go a little bit. But I would, something I believe everybody in this room could do is do like a, um, a, a six to six fast to where you just kind of fasted from six o'clock or seven to seven, maybe fasted in that time period and then eat something that night, okay? Maybe that's a little bit more doable for you. Um, I just don't want you to go into this thinking, well, man, there's no way I'm on juice. And, and I, I, don't, I, I don't blame you. I didn't do it the first time I ever fasted. So I'm just wanting everybody to be a part of what we're doing. As the pastor of this church and somebody that I believe you, you trust to be a part of your life, I'm just saying this for your benefit. Do the fast. It could be social media. You could, you could just say, well, look, I'm going to be done with, with YouTube for, a, uh, for 21 days or whatever. Just do something. Because I believe if you do, you're going to see the result of that. I promise you, man, it's going to make a difference in your life. So just, just make the plan. And we're going to pray for everybody at the end of the service that you would have grace to be able to do it, okay? Because I know we need help, all right? Because, um, again, it's always easy to say yes to one meal. But when you wake up tomorrow and, and you know that the next 12 hours or 20 days you're not going to eat, you could kind of be freaking out a little bit. So we're going to pray and ask God to give us some help. So I'm going to start today's message. We're going to talk about be, you know, putting God first in our lives. So let's go to Matthew 6, 33. Hallelujah. 
Now well, let's listen to the words of Jesus and what he said. In Matthew 6, he said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Does Jesus want to add things to our life? Yes, he does. He wants to add a lot of things to our lives. That means he does. See, sometimes we have this picture of God that he don't really want us to have nothing. No, God wants you to have stuff. He just don't want stuff to have you. That's the problem with a lot of us. We'll get stuff in our life. We'll get that gift we've always wanted. And next thing you know, we don't see the individual for three weeks because they're just so wrapped up in the gift they got. The gift's got them, okay? So God's all about getting us nice stuff. He just wants us to rule the stuff and the stuff not rule us. And the only way that happens in the world me and you live in, now I can't speak for Africa, I can't speak for Asia, I can't speak for these other countries that don't have the stuff we have, okay? Their, their challenges are different. But in this world we live in, there's too many toys to play with. There's too much. I mean, seriously, you don't even have to leave your house and you can watch all kinds of stuff on your mobile device. We have done got trapped in the house, trapped, you know, uh, to where we don't even have to do much and go anywhere and we can just get all the entertainment we want. So, again, that's why I'm just compelling you to say no to some of that stuff because you need to feel like, you need to know what it feels like to be hungry for something. I mean, man, I think our problem in America is what I believe Timothy, uh, God, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, is our bellies have become our God. Our appetites have become our God in this country. That, man, we really do. I mean, we want to point our finger at the, the, at the person that's, you know, dealing with, with drugs or alcohol. And we want to point our finger at maybe some, somebody that's dealing with pornography or, or dealing with, you know, uh, uh, extramarital affairs or whatever. We want to push our finger to them, but yet we can't push away from the table. That really we eat way too much. Y'all know we do. Like I've told y'all before, I have extra fat under this shirt. Now that extra fat did not come without some help. I mean, I know we, we don't like to talk about this. This can be a tender subject, okay? But the extra weight we have was our doing. It did not just chase us down and go, <laughs> I found somebody. Let me just attach onto your sides and we'll call these love handles. No, I had to work to get my love handles. Okay, you've had to work to get your love handles. Welcome to the love handle church where we value love handles here at this church. Okay, but seriously, we, we, we do. We have to put the work in to get these things. And did you know that it's going to take some time to get rid of those things? But one of the best places to go is to kind of build your life on that food is not something I live for. Food is something that I live by. Let me say that again. Food is not something I live for. I mean, we do. We live for the moment. Well, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to stop that today because my birthday's tomorrow. So we, we live because, see, our whole birthday is wrapped around something good to eat. Okay. Well, you know, I'll start that fast, but I'm going to wait till uh, after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Why? Because we know there's going to be some food. There. In America, food is our problem. It is, guys. Okay? And, and again, I, you know, there's other things that are our problem too, but food is, is an issue. And that's why I believe that if we'll pull away from some of that and just begin to feel what it feels like to be a little hungry. And maybe we take that hunger and we translate that hunger into this is how it needs to feel towards God. And this is how your spirit and my spirit feels most of the year. Because it ain't getting the spiritual food it needs. Because we're too busy feeding our natural side. Am I the only one that does that in here? I mean, do y'all eat a lot? I mean, I mean, y'all looking at me like, no, man, we don't have no problem with that at all. Man, we, you know, come on. This is a big deal. Amen. And, and I believe our freedom can be in saying no. I, I know this ain't popular. I know there ain't a lot of people even on YouTube. They hear this, they ain't even going to pay no attention to this, okay? I'm just telling you, this is a life-changing thing that we're about to do here. And I can't say it strong enough, okay? Matthew 6, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. God is alive. 2022, that's a lot of twos, man. <laughs> 2022 is going to be a great year of victory. I believe in this church, the banners that I really want flying high over this church and what we're going to be contending for, I know as a pastor is what I'm contending for, is I'm ready to see the power of God on display. 
I'm tired of reading about it. I'm tired of talking about it. Okay? I'm ready to see the power of God move. Okay? I'm tired of giving Facebook money to, to, to run a marketing campaign to get people to come to church. I'm ready to see God's marketing campaign, which is heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, the eyes being opened that are, that are blind, the deaf being able to hear. That's the things that I'm contending for. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see people come in here and, and leave the same. I, I want people to experience God, not experience me, all right? I mean, or experience each other, which is good. I want to experience God's power. How many of y'all want to? How many of y'all know you read the book, you know, in Moses, you know, he come up on the Red Sea and he parted it. Man, ain't that powerful? They're walking across on dry land. Man, the walls of water, they're seeing the fish. Y'all probably seen some of the movies, you know, the fish swimming around or whatever, you know. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come up to a fiery furnace, get thrown into it. They don't burn. These are, these are examples of God's power, amen? Did he run out of it when he got to our generation? I mean, did Jesus use all his power when he was on the earth in healing the sick and raising the dead and in healing blind people, okay? No, he did not use all his power. All he did is he transferred it to me and you. And that's what I want to see, okay? I want to see us begin to step into our place as his children and see the power of God begin to flow through us on our jobs, in our families, in our churches, amen? In our community. That's what the world needs, amen? There's a hurt, lost world out there that is looking for a hope. They're looking for some light. They're looking for something positive, okay? Not another uh, self-help message. Not another positive message. They can get that from anywhere, okay? They need something that's going to touch them and change their life. Just like we all do. I mean, I want to come to church and see God do something in my life too, amen? I, I, I don't want to see sickness stay on somebody that I have the power of God in me to remove it, Amen? And that's what I want us to contend for this year. That's what we're going to be praying for. That's what we'll be gearing our energy towards is God use us. Amen, Nathan. Hallelujah. God use us. Amen. Because he wants to. Many of you guys that come to church and God stirs you a little bit, you know there's more. You know that God has more for your life. He didn't bring you for such a time as this to just have you come in and go through the motions in life. No, there's greatness on the inside of you and me. And that greatness needs to come out. But because our pipes are clogged up with burritos and Cheetos and Coca-Cola and whatever else, God's trying to speak to us, but the channel that He's trying to speak to is clogged up. Our spirit's trying to navigate through pizza and chicken wings and whatever else. You know, we sit down and we're going to pray to God. What do we do? We just start thinking about food. We think about something. Man, I'm missing this. I'm missing that. I'm just telling you, we got to hone in this natural side of us and let our spirit become big. Because we put low value on our spirit. We put low value on the spiritual side of man because we know nothing about it. All we know about is when we look in the mirror and we see our hair, we see our body, we see all the external, and we really want to work hard on that. You see what I'm saying? We want to really, some of y'all did today. You, you looked in the mirror and you worked on yourself a little bit. Okay? Did you know all that's going to be messed up here in a few hours when you go to bed and wake up? It's going to be looking like a, you know, a hot mess, man, when you get up. Okay? So we spend so much time on something so temporary to try to get somebody else's approval. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, if you got a gut, don't suck it in. Push it out, baby. Be, be who you are, man. Be who you are. You ain't trying to impress nobody. But we spend so much time on this right here. And you know what? There's so many people that will actually date based on what they see on the outside. Yeah. They'll even go so far as to say, I do, to what they've seen on the outside. And then, and then Joker's got snakes on the inside of them. They so jacked up spiritually. I'm serious. So I want us to start looking from the inside out. We was created to operate from the inside out, not the outside in. Okay? And I'm telling you, we live in a messed up, jacked up world in America, man. We, we got all of our focus on things, all of our focus on vacation, all of our focus on doing this and doing that and going, doing, going, doing, going, doing. And if we got time, we'll squeeze a little Jesus in there. Just a little bit. We don't want to go overboard because that would cause us to be radical. 
you, you acted a little bit too crazy for this God of yours. You know what, man? <laughs> I've been to football games, and I've watched football games. Have you seen grown adults and what they do? Really? It's insane. Well, I, I don't want to call anybody out. Y'all may be some of them. But I'm just saying, it, it's okay. I'm not saying it's bad. But, man, they'll paint their face. I mean, you got students that have no shirt on and just writing all over them. Rah! I mean, for what? They ain't playing. <laughs> they definitely ain't getting their advice to how we need to play this game. But yet we go through all these external measures to root for something that will fade away. Get so emotionally wrapped up in things. And, and then when it don't work out, we get so let down on things that are going to change. God is saying, give me your heart. Give me your heart, man. If you'll just give me 21 days, give him 21. I challenge you. Give him 21 days. You think you all bad? You think you can do anything? I dare you. Double dog dare you for the next 21 days to really focus on God. I mean, you hit the erase button on all social media, every entertainment thing you can, and say, God, you number one. I'm giving you it all. I'm going to read that Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do my best to do everything I can to focus strictly on God. Watch what happens. I dare you. If you're man enough, then do it. Do it. Stop some things in your life. I'm calling for some people to man up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's do this thing. We are living in some exciting times right now. The world is going to continue to get darker and darker. Y'all know that? Can I give y'all a news flash here? The world ain't going to get better. The world as we know it changed drastically March of 2020. But it ain't done. It's going to continue to get dark. And have you read the Bible? I mean, do, do you see any part where it starts going down this road that we see in, in, in any of the letters that Paul wrote when he said to Timothy, perilous times are coming. What, Paul? What would you say? Yeah, let me say it again in English. Perilous times are coming. And then we keep going and then we get to Revelations. What part of Revelations is telling you anything in the first 20 chapters? But hell on earth. So things are going to get darker. The good news is, that means we're going to be brighter. How can you have a great outpouring and move of God if the world is okay? You can't. Because they think everything's all right. But you can't have an awesome revival when the world thinks that they're about to die and there is no way out. So if it gets dark enough out there, and it is, this is the opportunity that we have to demonstrate something they need before we check out of here. Because we're going to check out of here, friend. Okay? It's going to get darker and darker. Then those in the dark will be looking for the light. That is where we come in with this glorious revival that will be powered by Almighty God through the Holy Spirit working through all of us that believe in Jesus and are walking in the light. You have to choose this, guys. Jesus chose to get along with God. He chose to get with God every day. He chose that. And because he made the right choice, he was able to see a lot of great things. He could have been lazy like we have been sometimes. And he wouldn't have got nothing done. But I'm telling you, man, when the world's pressing you, man, there's, there's things in our lives that we need to see moved over these next 21 days. There's schedules that need to be changed. There's things that have been hindering us. They need to stop. And I'm telling you, when I get done with the day, I really believe you're going to see that God wants to change those. But he needs a little commitment from us. Quit going down these rabbit trails and bumping along and trying to think everything's going to work out by, the, by you, the sweat of your brow and by, you know, your hands doing it. No, we need God's help. Amen? Again, the words that I want to be just hanging over this church this year are God's power and our sacrifice. Because it takes a sacrifice. Any good thing takes a sacrifice. Did you know if you go to work... You're going to have to sacrifice some time and energy to get there. And then you're going to have to do a good job. And then you get rewarded. They're not just going to openly open the checkbook up and give you whatever. No. They're going to have to see where you're at. And they will give you that. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We begin our fast today. And I believe that in the next 21 days, you are going to experience the presence of God like you've never seen before. As we start the new year, I want to say that you're going to have the best year of your life. Amen. 
I'm going to say that over and over again. You're going to have the best year of your life. You're going to be better in all areas of your life, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. God is a good God, and He has great things in store for you this year. When you say that Jesus, when you say yes to Jesus and begin to serve Him in this life, you will need to grow in some areas of your life. You're going to need to grow in prayer. You're going to need to grow in love. You're going to need to grow in faith. You're going to need to grow in truth. And if I have time this week or next week, I'm going to say some things that might blow your mind, okay? It might make you uncomfortable. But the truth of God's Word is being challenged today. It's being perverted. It's being, you know, uh, just pushed away as old and worthless. The ways we do relationships, the ways we do things in life. God's Word speaks very clearly on these issues. And we have got to get back to standing up for what God stands for. And we as the church are not going to be weak in these areas. We're going to be strong in these areas. But we do. We need, we need to grow in truth and His Word, and we need to grow in the Holy Spirit. These are vital for us to be able to live out the will of God for our lives. See, the problem, guys, is we spend so much time developing our natural minds and our bodies. We spend so much energy doing that. That when it comes to spiritual things, we have a deficiency. We don't have what we need. We've got generations of children and even millennials that have no clue about the Ten Commandments of God. No clue about the morality of God. The blessing of God. They have very little clue about spiritual things. Why? Because we fo- even in the church, we focus on how to manage your money, you know, how to do this, how to do that. And those are good. We need to know them. But we need to know what the Bible says about living for Him. Amen? Because last time I checked, the Apostle Paul, if you read Ephesians, Colossians, he gives a list of things we don't need to do, and he gives us a list of things we do need to do. That's not in there just to take up space. God is trying to tell us there's an enemy that's trying to get us off track. And those letters were written to the church. They weren't written to a bunch of sinners. Why? Because when you join God's team, you now become a target for the enemy. You're a threat to his. The devil knows his time is running out. He knows that we are waking up as the bride of Christ. And I'm telling you, we're about to get on with it. Amen? I believe there's people in this room right now that you are saying enough's enough. This year ain't going to be like last year. This year is going to be the greatest year of my life. And it's going to be the greatest year of my life spiritually. I'm going after God and I'm going to see my world change. I'm going to see my kids get saved. I'm going to see my my workplace change. I'm going to see people. I mean, I watched a movie this past week and I don't know the name of it. It's a football movie. I wish I knew the name of it. But anyway, this football player was a walk-on at a college in Arkansas, okay? And I wish I knew the name of it. What is it? It's Greater. That's what it's called, Greater, okay? It's a great movie. You need to watch it. It is a very good movie based on a true story. But anyway, he was uh, from a family where his dad was an alcoholic. His mom pretty much raised him. His older brother was like 14 or 16 years older than him. So there was a huge gap. He was the youngest. And he wanted to play for Arkansas Razorbacks football. So he told his mom, I'm going to play for them. So he fought his way to get on that. He was a walk-on on on the school. He weighed 330 pounds. He was a big blob. Man, he couldn't even hardly run, okay? But the coach said, you know, know, look, if you lose some weight, uh, you know, maybe there will be a chance. And the coach just began to start working with him. He didn't have to because he was not scholarship. He was just a walk-on. And if you're not a scholarship player, they don't spend a lot of time with you, okay, because they got money invested in other players. Well, this kid started working out. This kid started doing his thing and working. And all the players made fun of him. I mean, he didn't have no friends. But his faith in Jesus, he kept reading his Bible in the dorm. He kept going to, he started a small group. And man, it just started growing and growing. He started letting his light shine in the midst of a bunch of people that were making fun of him. He began to let what was on the inside come on the outside. And just to make a long story short, he ended up getting in shape, becoming the start left, I mean, right tackle, uh, I believe right guard or right tackle for Arizona, I mean, Arkansas Razorbacks, and ended up getting drafted by the Indianapolis Colts in in the NFL just because he decided to go all out for God when all around him, they tried to get him to drink some alcohol, they tried to get him to come over here, they constantly tried to get him off track, but he stayed true to God in the midst of, of wicked, evil people, and he ended up leading all of those people to Christ. 
they ended up following him. So let me tell you something. The devil don't have the power. God has the power. you just got to be willing to stand up and say, I will be the pipe you walk through, God. And if it means I have to be by myself for a little while, so be it. I'll be by myself for a little while. But it won't be long because what you got is what they want. They just want to see how real it is in you. Sometimes when you're getting offered a drink or when you're getting offered, you know, a little sex, when you're getting offered this kind of stuff right here, it's just a test because they really want to see you got something good. And if you give into that, they go, okay, that stuff ain't real. But this kid showed that he, could, he, he would walk it out. And he ended up leading all those to Jesus. Amen. We get up every day to do something that will make our lives better. Everybody in this room is going to get up in the morning. You're going to go to a job to get a what? Paycheck. Okay, you're going to go to school to learn. You know, you're going to go to college to get better. You know, you're looking for good relationships. You're looking for a church. You go to church to get better. You want to be in a relationship because it's going to make your life better, okay? I mean, we always want to try to do something to make our life better. And if we're going to be on this earth, then why not be here and experience life on earth with God leading the way of our lives instead of getting up every day and bumping along, having 15 marriages, having all these different problems, having five different jobs, and getting nowhere in life? Why would we want to do that? Would somebody answer me? Why do we want to do that? It's because we think we know best. And God is saying today, look, enough's enough. Let me lead you. And in Him leading you means you're going to have to delete you. And you may have to push some things out of your way. Amen? God knows best for our lives. And all we need to do is hear from Him and not be distracted from the things that will get us off track. So, let me ask a question here. Has anybody here today ever fasted? Let me see your hand. Okay. That's a good number. All right. Was it easy? Okay. Glad we have honest people here. And for all y'all that hadn't fasted, you know that's just the truth, guys. <laughs> did it make a difference in your life when you did, though? It did, didn't it? I know it changed my life. So what does the Bible say real quick about prayer and fasting? In Matthew 6, again, red letters, Jesus is talking to us. In verse 5, he says, when you pray, not if you pray, not maybe you should pray, but when you pray. You know, I can say this about most false religions. They are diligent to pray. They are. Now, we know it ain't getting nothing accomplished. It's just works. But they'll do it religiously. And here we are with the potential to talk to the creator of heaven and earth. And we neglect that. Did you know that a prayer meeting in the church is the smallest meeting in any church? You can have a church full of 15,000 people, and the prayer group will be the smallest. The softball team, they'll stand in line to play on that. Oh, yeah. Prayer? No. Uh, nah. I mean, I don't want to just say something negative, but again, I just gave you all multiple times that we're going to be praying. You want me to take a snapshot there by and show y'all what it looks like? I'm just being real with you guys. We need prayer. We need to talk to God. Okay? And you need to talk to God with your family. It's a good thing. Amen? Hallelujah. He goes on to say, Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray... Go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. That is the most important prayer right there. It's not the public setting. It's, it's you being at home in your quiet time, having a place you could get alone and talk to God. I would encourage that above every other prayer gathering any day, okay? Get alone with God because this is what he's going to do. He says, then your father who sees everything will reward you. Now, again, everybody in this room, when somebody gives you something, does that make you feel good? Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> but let me tell you something. When God gives you something, it'll do more than feel good. Okay? It does a lot spiritually to you. So now let's go. We're going to drop down a little bit. And he talks about fasting in Matthew 6, verse 16. He says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. That means while we're fasting this, don't go to work and, oh, no, man, I can't have that today. Uh, I'm not eating. I'm fasting and it ain't easy. I really would like to have that. And you'll probably have a lot of opportunities, too, if you decide to say no to some food. I know I did years ago. I, I, I did the same thing that I'm doing now, and I went to work. And this guy comes out of nowhere, a sales rep, and bringing Chick-fil-A biscuits on the job. 
Never does anybody do that. Never. I've never had that happen. Guy walks in with a handful of chicken biscuits. Man, hey, look, man, I got some extra biscuits. You want one? No, no, man, I, I'm fasting. I'm praying to God. No. That ain't what we did. No, I'm excited. I was disappointed. <laughs> I was disappointed, okay? I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm thinking, but it, well, you may have some opportunities like that, okay? Because the devil knows how important this is, guys. You may not think so. He does, okay? He says, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head. That means today go home and get some Crisco. Belinda, you anoint Kevin's head today. Get that Crisco out. Don't get the liquid. Get, the, get that real white stuff. You rub it all over the head out of there. So go home today and you anoint each other. If you don't have somebody to anoint you, then just kind of, you know, call somebody up and, you know, you furnish the oil and they'll furnish the time and it'll be a fun time. Amen. So you anoint your head with oil. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. And wash your face. I'm sure you'd have to after you do that. <laughs> So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will be done. He's going to do what? Openly. How many of y'all want some openly blessings from God? Amen? And some of us have seen that, but God is saying, I want to give it in a greater measure. I want to, I want to just say something before we go on to this next. I'm getting ready to show you some pictures of something funny, okay? <laughs> you might remember, you might not. But y'all remember when the children of Israel were in bondage to Pharaoh and the Egyptians? Okay. You remember when Moses went in and, and, and walked them out of there? And, and remember what God said is, look, you know, the Egyptians are going to give you stuff, right? Gold and silver and all that. So they took all their stuff. You know, that had to be fun. Excuse me, ma'am. I need those earrings too. Come on. get, get, to, get to go. Yeah. Shoes, everything. Let's go. All right. So they probably had fun doing that. Did you know that in Psalms it says that in the last days there's going to be a great wealth transfer? It says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the what? Okay, that is from that picture that we see as the Egyptians are giving their stuff away. There's wicked people all out here that think they got some good stuff. All they do, they are a bank. They holding on to our stuff. There's getting ready to happen in this land. This is the God I'm talking about. This is the God that can... Shift things just like this. They were in bondage. No hope. Something shifted and now they got all the stuff. Why? Because they knew what to do with it and they were going to honor God with it. Friend, if you and I will do our part to get ourselves in alignment with God, I can promise you things in your life could shift just like that. A check could show up in your mail to pay your house off just like that. I'm just That's the God we serve. He knows your address. He knows where you're at. But all he needs for us is a little bit of sacrifice, a little bit of commitment. And I promise you the things that you've been struggling for and fighting to get, it will just, they'll just show up instantly. I mean, it's just amazing. So I'm just telling you that God has some great things in store for you guys. So I'm going to show you all this first picture and see if y'all remember. Y'all remember that? Come on. Come on. This, this is what we called what? Rabbit ears, okay? So back in the day, when I was a kid, this is what we had. Now, we did have the antenna on top of the house, but we also had to have this, okay? So we would have this, and you know, you had this old VH, I don't know, man, it did plugged in or something. But anyway, you would have to, you know, turn these knobs. You'd have to move them things sometimes to get a signal if you was going to watch a football game or if you was going to watch any. We didn't have much to watch, but this is what we had. And then, in some cases, you would have to go to the kitchen and get this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to get the tinfoil, man. We got to put a little tinfoil on there because you just never know. And, I mean, you, you would have to move it around, and, and you're working to get that signal because if you didn't, this is what you was looking at. This right here. I mean, you wasn't going to get no clear picture. But then it, it went so far as to the dad would have to encourage the kid to do this. Come on, son. No, man, move it this way. Move it this way. Move it this way. And it was even bad at our house. We had to climb up on the house, you know, the big antenna. So we had like a, you know, system going here. You know, we'd twist it and turn it because it's a real big antenna. And we would work to get a signal. And, 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 and when you got the signal, was you happy? Oh, yeah, you was happy. You got to watch it for, until the wind blew, okay? Or somebody walked by the rabbit ears and they kind of got out of whack. But this is how we watch TV. Well, these rabbit ears, guys, uh, 
Prayer will connect you to God like the bunny ears connect you. Oh, the rabbit ears. I call them bunny ears. <laughs> connect you to the signal for the TV. Fasting will strengthen the signal. So prayer is kind of like these rabbit ears. They connect us to God. But if we want to get a stronger signal, then there's fasting that kind of gives us that extra boost to God. And I know some of y'all may be sitting here going, man, you know what, dude? I came to church today, man. This is the last thing I would want to hear. I mean, I got a lot of things going on. I got, matter of fact, you need to hurry up. I need to go, okay? And, and that's the problem with us. We're looking for something that we can put in our pocketbook or in our back pocket and walk out of here and be all right. And friend, as long as you treat God that way, man, all of what God has for you is just going to be on the shelf somewhere. God is telling you something right now that will change your life. Everybody in this room. You've got to decide whether you want it or not. We don't get blessed according to what we think. We get blessed by God according to what He thinks. It's true. You want what God's got? You're going to have to do it His way. If you don't want what God has, and He's fine with that too. I mean, if you want, to, you want your own thing. I mean, there's some of us in this room that if we got $50,000 a day, it, it, would just, it would just cause us to go in a frenzy. We wouldn't know what to do. May even start getting a little comfortable, a little cocky. I got some money. Guys, it's not about materialistic things, okay? It's so much more than that. God has so much for us. There's stuff that you want that money can't buy. And the only way you're going to get it is you're going to have to do it God's way. That's why Jesus said, man, before you come to him, count the cost. There's a price to pay to be a Christian. And I think for too long, we've kind of watered that down and made it seem like it's not that big a deal. It's just a church thing. That's what them old weak people do on Sunday morning. I'm strong. I'm bold, man. I can do this on my own. And there's a lot of people out there doing that. And God will continue to let them do it. But there is no stronger person on this side of heaven is one that will stand up and say, God, whatever you will to me to do, I'll do it. Not my will. Your will be done. And that's what God is wanting us to see. Some of us in this room have a heart to serve God and heart to do what God wants them to do this year. But you're having a hard time seeing what He wants you to do. And all He's saying is, is look, if you'll just push a few things out of the way, I'll reveal to you what you need to do. I'll reveal to you where you need to go. I'll show you the problem and give you the answer to the problem. But you're going to have to slow down. God's that old man that's in the fast lane doing 40. And he's all in your way. And you ticked off. Because he needs to get in the slow lane. It might be him trying to get you in the slow lane. He don't need to be there. We need to be there. And I'm telling you, there is so much in store for us this year. There's stuff in this year that you don't even know about that he has for you. He does. He's got some special things for you. But what if it took just these 21 days and it set it all up for you? Would you do it? I mean, if he could come down right now and he, 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 he could say, uh, uh, Mary, this is all what I'm going to do to this year. All I want you to do is this fast right here. But this is everything I have for you. And she looked at that and she goes, oh, well, that's easy. I'll do that. Well, see, if he did that, it wouldn't take no faith. But if you believe God, like Hebrews tells us, He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him, 11.6 tells us, then we know He's going to do it before we ever see it. He's calling us to fast. I'm calling you to fast. I'm not demanding you do it, but God, I want you to do it so bad because He has something for you. And if you start good today, and tomorrow you go by Chick-fil-A and get a biscuit. Just ask God to forgive you. Get back going again. Don't quit. If you slip day six, slip. Ask God to forgive you. Get back up and go. He honors the heart, guys. That's what he's looking at as a heart. He's not looking for perfection. You may miss it. Guess what? 
God knew that before he ever got us, okay? We're a jacked up mess. He knows that, but he's looking at our heart. Let's do this. Let's be the rabbit ears that got the signal going. Amen? And let's watch and see what God does. Fasting will clear your mind, your soul, and your body of all the junk we have been uh, digesting over the past year. As we do that, our spirit will begin to get stronger, and then we will clearly hear from God. Fasting can also be a time to stop something that you know you can't live without. Things we can't live without, live without are little gods in our lives because the things we say we can't live without are controlling us. What is currently in your life that you say you can't live without right now? Don't die, oh man, I ain't stopping that. You can forget it. You just let me know you need to stop that because that's a God in your life. What is something that if asked to quit, you would say no way? <laughs> what is something that you know has got a hold on you? And only you know that. And it can be a variety of things. And God is just saying, look, would you just give it to me for 21 days? Would you just say no for 21 days and let me give you something better? That's all he's asking. That's not much, man. You know what I'm saying? We can do this. Okay? We can do this. See the thing, see the thing is that if we confess, see the thing, you know, I typed this out as I was saying it, so it sounded good when I was doing it. See, the thing is that if we confess to be a Christian, then we're only supposed to have one thing in our life that we can't live without, we can't say no to, the one thing we can't quit. If Jesus is our Lord and Savior, then He gets the say in what we can and can't do. That is what being Lord of your life means. Fasting helps us keep everything in its right place. Second to our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where everything else needs to be. Jesus first in your life will help you have a great 2022. Fasting will move things out of your life that the enemy had set up for your destruction. God brought salvation through Esther and saved the nation of Israel after what? Prayer and fasting. And one of the things that she said, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you know the whole story about Esther, you can read it. It's about... Just a few chapters, but it's an amazing story. But Esther was a Jew that eventually became the queen to the king, uh, Eurexes, uh, and, and, and just was in a, a great place. But uh, Haman, which was uh, the king's second in command, wanted to kill all the Jews. So Mordecai, which was the brother or the uncle of, of, of Esther, you know, said, said this line to her, in, 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 and I think it's Esther uh, 7... Let me see, Esther. I'm going to make sure I get it right. I think it's in Esther 4, verse um, 13. Mordecai, which was her uncle, sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in this palace, you will escape when all the Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen, what's the rest of that say? For such a time as this. And the reason why I wanted you to hear that, because she was placed there for such a time as this. She did yield to God. The whole country, she said, look, everybody pray, fast and pray for three days. And that God would open up a door for me to go into the king. Because in that day, you didn't just walk into the king and say, hey, bro, I'm the queen. I got something to share with you. Even with her being the queen, she could have lost her head for doing that. So she had to have favor to go in there. So God opened up for her to have favor. And then uh, eventually, uh, the king was able to see that Haman wanted to kill all the Jews. So he was hung on the poles and killed. And all the Jews were saved. A country, a nation was saved that day through her being somewhere for such a time as this. And beginning to say, look, your will be done, not my will. If It goes on to say, if I die, I must die. So she was willing to die if she needed to, to save and do what God told her to do. Friend, I want to tell you that just like she was born for such a time as this, me and you are born for such a time as this right now. Our country needs you. America needs you. God needs you to save this country. It ain't time for us to sit around and just play games and play church. No, we have the power. God's wanting us. He set us in this moment for this day and this hour to do something great for Him. And He's called you and me to do it. And I promise you, if we will yield to Him, we will see some great things. 
Just like Esther was made to be queen for such a time as this, we have been made the children of God for such a time as this. It is time for the world to see the true God of all the earth, to see His power demonstrated in the lives of those that are lost and without Him. The power of God that saves, heals, and delivers. It's our time to rise up and take our place in the army of God because we're about to see the salvation of souls in the United States of America. Today is the day that we move into that place, guys. This is our time. This is our year. Amen? I'm telling you guys, Jesus is about to come back. Jesus is about to come back. Do you know it was 2,000 years from Abraham to Moses? Did you know that it was 2,000 more years from Moses to Jesus? Do you know that the start of the next 2,000 years was when Jesus died in 33 A.D.? Do the math. What's 2,000 plus 33? Am I saying Jesus is coming back then? No. But if the calculations are right, we're getting pretty close. We don't have much time. And you may say, well, brother, brother, they've been saying that for years. I know. I've been saved since 1988. I know what they've been saying, okay? But I'm telling you, something is happening in the earth. And I've told you this before, before the end can come, there's going to be a one world currency, one world religion, and one world government. Well, if you know anything about the United Nations, 2030 is their plan to have that in place. That's the United Nations. You can go to their website. That's not my idea. That's their idea, that they want all the world to have the same currency, the same God, in the same government. Ain't it coincidence? 2030-2033. And the end would come. And then there would be a mark. You know, in 2019, y'all probably would, we all would have probably said, There's, how are they going to make that happen? I think that's all becoming a little bit more clear to everybody today. That the whole vaccine passport that we're seeing used all over the world, not here yet. Did you know that that vaccine passport in other countries is already starting to reveal other information about individuals? That's just an avenue for whence it does get launched through the world. That's the way the beast is going to know who bows and who don't. There has to be a system in place. Before, we would never even think, how is he going to know who does what? You can see it in the palm of your hand. I'm telling you, the technology is being put right there before us. So I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that to fire you up to know, look, man, the end is near. And one day we're going to see precious people be exited from the presence of God into an everlasting torment. That is a real thing. And God is saying, look, man, let's start this year right. Let me have your life. Let me do something with your life. And I believe it will be the best thing you and I ever did. So as we close today... I want you guys to say this after me. Say, God's power will be in my life. I will be more devoted to God. Okay, well, we're going to say it again. Little, little, wake up, okay? Show some energy here, okay? And we're almost done, okay? Give me a little bit of energy, okay? Okay? All right. God's power will be in my life. I will be more devoted to God this year. My life belongs to God. He is my provider, my savior, my protector, my healer, my deliverer, my salvation, my everything. I will complete this fast with His help. My life will be changed. 2022 will be the greatest year of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now what I want to do is we are closing. I want to pray for everybody. So you can go ahead and stand. Um, and I want to pray for everybody. And next week I may get into some things that a prophet actually shared uh, in the 60s that is pretty alarming to see what's happening. I might get into some of that next week. 
But I want to pray for everybody that's saying yes to the fast, okay? I really do. Uh, and again, this is, uh, we don't have any fasting police, so we're not going to have people going around asking you what you're doing and what you're not doing. It's not about that, guys. It, don't even tell me what you're doing. Um, I simply wanted to throw some you know, things out there that may be doable for everybody. Um, and whatever that may be, just do something. Please do something, okay? Then if you need help, guys, um, I'm here. I can help you. You can call me, um, and, and I can help you with it. But I want to pray that we get grace to be able to do this. We need God's help to be able to do this. And I believe, guys, if you'll just get past today, tomorrow will be easier. The next day will be easier. And once you get to the second week, that's kind of like hump day. You get to Wednesday, that's my goal, man. Wednesday of that second week, I'm thinking, whoa, if I can get there, it's a downhill slide. But if y'all would, let's all agree together that God's going to give us that grace to be able to do this. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for each and every person here today, including myself and those that are watching online that are going to be doing the fast as well. I pray for every single person in Jesus' name. That at the sound of my voice, Father God, your grace is being imparted into our hearts right now. The grace to be able to say no to the things of this world and yes to your things over the next 21 days. I thank you, Lord, that as we do this, Father God, that food is not going to be attractive to us. Your presence is going to be attractive to us. I thank you, Lord, for giving us a love for your word, a love for your presence, a love for, for, for good godly material to listen to. Help us, Lord, to be able to do this. And I thank you, Lord, that as we do it, I just pray, Father God, that in the days to come, each and every person that has put forth effort to do this and, and showed their heart to want to to do this for you, Father God, that they will see the reward openly in their lives. Father, I give you praise and glory and honor. And I thank you, Lord, that this church is never going to be the same. We're moving from glory to glory, from victory to victory, from faith to faith, Father God. We are going to be a church you use. And though our, 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 our beginning looks small, our latter end is going to increase more and more, Father God. That in the name of Jesus, you're going to use this small little building and this group of hungry people for you to see people get healed, delivered, saved, set free. We're going to see, hallelujah, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We love you, Father God. And we thank you for helping us. And we all together agree by saying amen, amen, amen.